Um, I posted an article. I want to talk about this article that I posted on uh, Medium. You have to go to the Facebook page. I'll try and put a link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. But I did an article on the Black KKK. And it's titled, Removing the Hood of the Black KKK. And just this week, if you, you've seen the videos I've posted the last week, the tragedy, the horror, the senseless killing, the innocent killing of innocent lives, um, of those with promising futures. There has to be a narrative change where the people, us, we have to change the narrative to, at some point, black on black crime. And disclaimer, if you don't like the word black, if you don't like the phrase black on black crime, if you're going to say black on black crime, uh, everybody has crime um, in their area and crime is a thing of poverty. If you're saying all these statements, when you say these statements, I want, to, I want you to show where you are like you have to be active in some shape or fashion to say that because you can't make a statement like that and not really visit these scenes not really talk to these people and not really you know what i mean so you when you say that you have to really understand like yes there's poor communities that aren't as crime written that does exist. So yes, everybody commits crimes in proportion to where they live, but at the same time, you have to provide some context of you actually being out in the quote unquote field, out actually being with these people. Otherwise, I don't think you're credible. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, because it's kind of a slap in the face in the, um, for families that are going through this. Just to say, well, are you gonna tell the? Are you gonna tell these families? Are you gonna tell these families? Oh well, I know you, your daughter was killed by a stray bullet, but you know, black on black crime doesn't exist. Even though this was a shootout, and um, you know, this is a poor city, so no, like at some point there has to be a narrative change, and the change has to be. Black on black crime is replacing the KKK. It's the new KKK. That's unapologetically what it is. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Because people are afraid, like don't let your fear of protesting, of addressing the issue, be used as a scapegoat to try to discredit the situation. And that's, you know, what I was basically talking about in the brief article is that you have to, we have to get past our own insecurities, our own pride and shortcomings and figure out, because this is the thing, we have to figure out how to address this. And there's another, this is what I noticed while writing the article, even though I didn't put it in there, but let's look at it. In a way, if we solve black on black crime ourselves, more than likely we'll solve a good number of police shootings. Why? Because that organization, us organizing from within, it can, it'll, 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 manifest outward it'll continue it'll be a domino effect whereas if we just protest and talk about the police and wait for the police to do everything and wait for them to stop shooting us and wait for like we want them to stop shooting us and we want them to solve the crime in our community is that really logical is it, does that make any sense? We're, we're having, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. We're having a regular conversation. We claim there's no good officers. Or some of us claim that. There's no good officers. It's corrupt. It's a system. 
uh, all of these things, yet we think they're going to solve black on black crime. Mind blown, seriously. So, I mean, let's, oh man. We have to really, it's going to take organizing. It's going to take policing the communities. The Black Panthers already did it. But that's where the mental, this is where the mental illness comes in because we're so dysfunctional. We're so prideful. That's, you know what I mean? It's just, it's too much ego. It's too much, it's too much ego. Like we're, if you think about it, we're really holding ourselves back more so than the system. The fact that we're not, um, because if, if we were organized, like if we were organized to a T and we were still in this same situation, then you could say the system. But how strong is our bond, is our unity, if the system can break it? Does that mean, are we saying, you know what I mean? So I just don't really, I'm just trying to connect the dots where we protest police brutality, we protest the injustice system. And that's fine, that's great, and we need to continue to do that. But at what point do we say, we're going to look for the killers and we're going to turn them in? And this is an example to those who want to do these things in the future. Because I understand that it's a culture of we have to protect ourselves, kill or be killed, different things like that. I understand that. But at the same time, a stop, like uh, uh, things have to come to a halt. Things have to stop at some point in time. And that's going, some people are going to feel bothered. You can't really stop that. But we have to work on conflict resolution. We have to work on, I fully believe, and I, I don't think we've really tried to, um, explore all of those options, but I, I seen a documentary where the people in Liberia, I think, I think it was Liberia, and they had that civil war and the, their parents killed, you know, the family, and you know, basically a lot of infighting and people that know each other and grew up with each other were killing each other. And you know, they were able to meet and come to a conflict resolution. And I understand that, you know, they may have more of a quote-unquote ancient to tradition and culture that they have a foundation to rely upon in that situation, whereas we're kind of just winging it. And our culture, to a certain extent, is fairly new, even though it may have remnants of the past. You see what I'm saying? So I understand that. But... I'm just saying something has to be done. Something has to, um, there's really no excuses anymore because it's like people, they don't really resonate with this until it happens to them. And then you want to go out there, then you want to be on the news and then you want your, the killer of your child or God forbid, whoever, you know, caught, rightfully so. But when the Klan comes on, when the Klan would come in the communities on horses and people would hide or, you know, at least that's how the media would portray it, where they would incite fear. You didn't know who was under the robes. They had these torches, you know what I mean? They might torture property. And it's like, people are afraid of the youth. People are afraid to address the youth. They're afraid to correct them. They're afraid to... Uh, speak truth to power and when you have these situations it's like we're running off fear we're running off fear from we're running off fear from white supremacists and we're running off fear from the black kkk so the black inner city hood or whatever you want to call it is just one big fear-based cesspool for the most part people getting shot in front of churches and Kids being shot, kids can't play, 
Uh, it's just, it's a mental illness. When you, we don't want to protect ourselves and think about like, we go, we, we're willing to sign up for war in Iraq but not to fight for our communities. I don't get it. To me, this is all mental illnesses. And social media is really making it worse because it's making it, like I said, it's, it's, it's pacifying our individuality. It's pacifying our confirmation bias, as I said, I think in the first video, it's pacifying our need to just be around people that think like us, 100%. And if you think like me, 90%, that's not good enough. You know what I mean? So it's, that, that is a sign of insecurity. If you cannot be around someone that, I'm not even talking about on a daily basis, but if you can't even have a conversation with someone that doesn't think like you, that is at least respectable, that's um, how are you gonna get anywhere? Not just black and white, but within the black community. See, a lot of our issues, if we could channel to build organization within ourselves, we could be a lot stronger to fight white supremacy. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like. You have to build the power within, like you have to work out first, and then you can fight white supremacy. You have to fight within. You have to build that um, confidence and courage and unity and organization within. And yes, there will always be some people who be against it and people you'll never agree with, but if you can agree with someone on the majority of things, don't let one thing just um, split you up. If the person has good character and good, you know, is a decent, respectable person, then um, go for it. But to wrap it up, the black KKK, uh, removing the hood of the black KKK, article a brief article I wrote on my observation of what I saw throughout last week literally, literally seen a man be free for from 17 years of imprisonment was wrongfully accused to be released less than 24 hours later a nine-year-old girl released and killed so we keep we talk about white supremacy and fighting him but black on black crime is us moving backwards from fighting uh, white supremacy. I posted uh, the whites becoming a minority, but if black on black crime continues, we're going to be, what, what does that mean for black males? You know, so um, those are my thoughts. Um, I don't know, maybe tomorrow we'll talk about the Democrats in these um, black cities. Or you can give me your thoughts and your opinions. Stay tuned for more melanated media news or alternative independent thinking. Your future depends on it.